Uh, I tried it once. Dead. Civic life, yo. That you need to lose some weight, man. Fucking hell, bro. Push it. Oh, come on. See in this. You get me? So we do things around here. So yeah, you can see it's a madness over here. Fucking Hellcats run out of fuel. <laughs> bro, I'm gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> Look at him out of breath when he trains bro. and all that. Has man ever bumped a car by themselves? I reckon that's a world's first, UK's first, no? Let me tell you what's going off it for the Civic. Apparently, a world's first. Any that follow my vlog channel, man like Ricky, you'd have already seen the little insight, bought Audi TT Mark 1 3.2. Quattro DSG, basically ripping the Quattro system out and the DSG box and installing it to our turbocharged Civic. You get me that? Is this not true? It's true. It's true. Am it's I true. talking yeah. facts? Yeah. World's first. World's first. So we're gonna head over to Punk Performance and get this project started. Price of petrol nowadays, huh? Listen, you lot ain't ready. Like, trust me, this Civic is gonna be levels, 100%. So yeah, for anyone that's new, uh, owned this Civic for about two years, it's already turbocharged, upgraded differential, upgraded suspension, lightweight wheels, upgraded brakes. A lot of people obviously all drive these cars, but I'm excited about the dual clutch transmission. So, and then after we install that, we'll max the turbo out and then we're looking to run in like a proper built engine and a much bigger turbo. So. Right, so we've landed at Punk Performance. See the Civic in the background, a couple of parts down there. I'll show you them in a second. So we've got Cal, the man. What are you saying? Been all right? Yeah, not bad. Yourself? Yeah, good, good. Good, good. Quick little mention who you guys are, background, what you do. So we're Punk Performance. Uh, there's technically two sides to us where we do normal servicing and MOTs and general kind of work that side. And then this side of the building is all of our performance stuff. Yeah. Everything from smelly old Volvos to <laughs> drift cars to turbo civics. We do lots of engine builds. And uh, obviously uh, this car behind actually has an E92 M3 dual clutch in it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is E92 nice M3 DCT. Again, the guy who owns this car is mm. disabled, so that's why we want okay. that. So I dropped the TT off. Yeah. Looked mint from the exterior, but yeah. you're saying it was a bit of a... It was It was deceiving. When we first looked at it, I remember you and I were sat around looking at it and it looked pretty good. Um, it we did, had, yeah. Tap around it and it obviously had some paint were done to it at some point, but it didn't look crusty or anything. The moment we got it on the ramp, we realised there was a lot of filler in it. And okay, again, a lot of filler. got some yeah, photos yeah. and videos of that. Yeah. It took big chunks, like inch and a half, two inches thick of filler out of it in wow. places. Yeah, basically we've got the parts laying on the floor right this second. So obviously I did mention we're going to be doing a, a DSG swap, the Quattro system, we're also going to be installed into the Civic. So this is all your crazy idea. As I say, <laughs> we got chatting yeah, yeah. and you're like, why don't we, I'm like, can we do that? Yeah, this tends to be a theme with most of my customers. It comes in as going, oh, I'll just, I'll just stick a bigger turbo on and next minute we're taking an engine out doing an engine swap <laughs> on a DCT. Right, so I'll just switch over to the wireless mic just in case the audio is terrible. So Cal, you know, you've done this before, obviously yes. you said the Mark III Golf is yeah, yeah, running yeah. a Holdex system that won with the Volvo engine. Yeah. So you're not new to this, but for the Civic, it'll be the first. You're saying it's a world's first as well. I think it? I've seen it in an FN2, but that was front wheel drive. And I've not as of yet seen a Haldex EP3. What I tend to use on most of our builds is a ECU from a company called Max ECU. Yes. They give me the ability to control the DSG and the DCT box and not have any issues. So the same ECU that we're going to be using for the engine, are we saying, are we using yes. for the gearbox yeah, also? Yeah, yeah, that'll control yeah. the gearbox as well. So that's how you've got control yeah. over the DSG box. And what is it, a straightforward job? Obviously, like you've done it a few times, you say yeah, what a few cars you've done, like the course. There's always, there's always little quirks. The main issue always is the fact that we're not using a brand new gearbox. If you went to Volkswagen and bought a brand spanking new gearbox at a kidney selling price, then you would never have any issues. And what would you say the gearbox can take? So obviously this car, I've not dynoed it, but we estimate power to be around four, maybe, I can't see it, I can't see it being 450, but it's gonna be no more than 450, I think. The advantage of having a Honda is that they make about as much torque as a Toyota Yaris. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have to worry too much about the stock clutch packs. Okay. So we should be able to do decent power on these. So you're going to recommend manual shifting, yeah? No, no, auto shifting's fine. Manual okay. shifting, however you want to do it. I mean, mm. it's horses for courses and whatever you're planning on doing. Yeah. I mean, more fun for me is using it manually. Yeah, 100%. Cal, what about the Holdex then? So you say there's some little tricks that you do with these as well, like... Um... Yeah, there is. Again, control strategy for them is pretty simple. They're basically zero to 100% duty cycle to, to say how much they lock up. The wizardry comes in the sort of hardware modifications itself in making them lock up and lock up as much as they can. And uh, yeah, we're not gonna speak engine today. First things first, we we want to get the whole decks installed we want to install the dsg box and then we're going to move on to engine but obviously the setup we've got right now cal we're going to mess about with that and maybe run it a 
bit more, bit more boost. Yeah, I mean, your Ching Chang spinny fang <laughs> right is going to be our limiting factor. Yeah. I mean, I've never in most of my career heard of a turbo that's called a power spirit. But <laughs> we will, power we'll, spirit. we'll wind it up and we'll see what it does. Mate, listen, guys, I've rinsed this car for like, <laughs> we've got to be coming up 10,000 miles on this setup now. Listen, not skipped a beat, nothing, zero. No, starting to smell a bit fuely, smell a bit of petrol, but. Apart from that, it starts up every time, no issues. I'm not going to knock eBay turbos. Like, yeah. they, they have their place in the world. If you've got a budget of £115 for a turbo, then excellent. <laughs> That's perfect. I'm not going to lie. I put, I put an eBay turbo in my own car once. It lasted for two and a half minutes. I managed to pull to the end of the drive, do a burnout, and next minute the oil seals fell out the exhaust. So what are we saying anyway? Because this car, as I say, is around 400 horsepower. Mm. We, can, we can max this oh, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. With I mean, your... I'm not sure what that turbo will do, power rise, because it's not the biggest of things, but we'll certainly keep pushing it until until we get to something that I feel is on the limit. So yeah, point I was trying to make anyway is we're going to run a bit more boost. Obviously, Quattro, DSG box, run a bit more horsepower, like five, 600-ish. Well, you say not 600, even if we can get 500, yeah. it'd be, I'm sure it'd be a big difference. So what other work you like? So is it a big job? It's, it's, a big job. it's not just a, a, a drop in bolt on like if you do a four-wheel drive conversion using crv bits everything's relatively bolt on with this system everything's going to be custom so you've got to create a tunnel you're saying as well underneath yeah. it's not going to have to be massive because it's not like we're fitting a rear wheel drive gearbox in there but we're going to have to put a tunnel in for the prop and maybe notch the uh, the uh, subframe a little bit for the transfer case and how is the car going to handle i mean obviously the the, the civic type r is a pretty good handling car you know yeah from my opinion what most people seem to do wrong when they do the four-wheel drive conversion is they don't seem to alter any of the spring rates or the damping or anything so they do handle a little bit weird one of the things is using a Haldex we can decouple it so that it can basically be a front wheel drive just with the extra weight at the back so technically it should handle like an EP3 type R mm. and then you'll just have that extra punch as you come out of the corner bloody excited yeah. launch control with the DSG works really really well, well as well you'll be able to set that up in oh yeah, yeah. oh man don't make it gas me <laughs> up bro but you reckon with DSG box Haldex all these parts put in what kind of weight are we going to be I think we're going to add on another 120 kilos let's 120 say 120 kilos we are going to try and take that out by removing stuff out the interior, yes. put Perspex windows in, do what we can to mm. negate the uh, the added weight. Inevitably, there's always going to be a weight gain by the fact that we're putting a dirty, great big prop and diffing yeah. back and the gearbox that weighs about the same as the Titanic. <laughs> so. But there's gonna be many benefits to obviously going DSG and obviously having the all-wheel drive system, instant shifts, no yeah. loss of momentum on upshift, no. do you know what I mean? Well, one of the big things is like, people don't realize how important or how much time you can lose in a gear shift. Mm. We had a Clio at Cadwell yesterday. It was like 0 0.5, 0 0.6 second for a gear wow, shift. Yeah. Which is an eternity when you're yeah, racing. Yeah, that's a lot of time. Well, that's what I mean by, yeah, these new cars, like these R8s. From a launch, the way that need, it never drops. No, never. And that's why you they're never fast. see it pause. You, yeah, you, from right. zero, rolling race is different, but from zero, when it just activates launch, the needle, it just never drops. It just constantly falls down. You're saying that this stock DSG box will be fine because you're saying there's no torque produced from these engines anyway as yeah. of now. If you're telling me that that power spirit is pretty laggy, <laughs> then, uh, then we won't have too many issues with like low down torque spikes. At some point, I'm gonna wanna throw the plastic cage bearings away and put the steel cage ones in. We're gonna wanna strip the box down and probably put a LSD in it and the yeah. same at the back. Quaif do LSDs for the front and the rear of these. Once we start going more power, that's when we'll start looking at upgrading what we've got yeah. and go from there. Man, let me tell you, I'm excited, man. I've just been chatting to Cal so much and the potential, like this guy, honestly, like there's so many other things that he does, like even with his Volvo engine. So obviously you know that I uh, announced the MG build, so I'm still wondering what I should do. Do I put the 3.2 in the MG from the TT or do I go with a Volvo build? I'm debating what to do. I'm gonna say this again, from my point of view, that's such a sacrilegious waste of a 3.2 putting in MG. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's saying, yeah, he's saying don't put the 3.2 in. Yeah, this Civic, like, I want to send it to the moon. Whatever Cal thinks we can do, like, I, I, I just want to send it, man. Like, I've had, obviously, you know, I've got some powerful cars and it is about drivability. You want the car to spool up. It's only a two litre turbocharged engine. So, you know, it's not three litre, it's not four litre. So this car probably is going to suffer with lag if we go with a gigantic turbo, but it's just getting that fine line, I think. Something that encourages cool. you to want to drive it as well. Do you know what I mean? If you've got a big laggy turbo. Yeah, nitrous kills all in that fence. Then. <laughs> <laughs> If we, need to, if we need to give it a 50 or 250 or 450 squirt, then we will. Yeah, we'll do okay. it. So, all right, Cal, let's end the video. Uh, so what, what are you going to do? Are you cracking on? Are you going to start? The, yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Uh, tomorrow it's going on this ramp here. Mm -hmm. This Volvo is getting pushed out. This is going on the ramp. We're going to get the back half of the interior, the front seats out. 
and we're going to start taking everything off ready to cut the floor out to see where we need to mount the prop. So Carl, we'll look, I'm going to end it there. Carl, final little plug, reminder of where people can find you, where you are. Um, okay, so our company is called Punk Performance. We haven't actually got a Facebook page at the moment and we're just based in Calverton in Nottingham, down in the literally industrial estate in the middle of nowhere. And what is it you can do for people? like what? Anything you want. We try and do as much as we can in-house. We don't outsource stuff apart from machine work. We've got our own four-wheel drive dyno. We work with every ECU pretty much. There's only a few ECUs I won't work with. <laughs> ECU master <laughs> um, and uh, HTG so that's all wiki cow till next time yeah